Hi everyone, Alex from Hammer Missions. As you can see, we've got the Mavic 2 out of the box, which can only mean one thing, we are heading out for a fly. So, what we're gonna to do today is we're going to go and shoot a cell tower. Now that's the same cell tower that we shot some months back, um, with the intention of coming back, processing the data into 3D, and then using that data to compare with the one we shot a few months back. And we're gonna be doing that using our new 4D comparison tool. So, I'm gonna get her packed up and we're gonna hit the road. So here we go, drone's all set up on site, as you can see. What we'll do is we'll just go and take a quick look at where the cell tower is. There we go, that's the cell tower. And that is what we shall be photographing today. So with the drone all set up, what we're going to do is we're going to take it for a quick test fly, get a bit of uh, video footage of the cell tower, and then we'll, um, we'll start to plan our mission. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to plan our mission on the tablet. Um, that way I can get the centre of the cell tower, which will work out the perfect uh, tower mission around it. So we're now ready to go up and mark our, pos our position for our tower. So open up the software, select tower mission, and then take off. You can see the height there rising as the drone takes to the sky. Pop up the camera there so we can see what we're doing. There's the cell tower. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fly up quite high and then we'll come over the top of it Once we're over the top, drop the camera down and try and find the middle. So the cell tower should be in the middle of the little screen there. And then we will tap the screen to create our tower mission. Just centering it. And there we go, tap the screen and create the tower mission. Now what we need to do is bring the drone back in and configure our parameters. So bringing the drone back down, and we'll land that and configure our parameters. So here we are on the ground, we can now configure our parameters. So we're changing our altitude to 90 feet and our bottom altitude to 72 feet. And we figured this out by taking the drone up and having a look at those distances while we were up there because there was a, a tree line that I didn't want to hit. So we'll change the, the radius so we're a tad closer to the cell tower. And we'll push our image overlap up to 80% which will enable us, enable us to get a good 3D render. So there we go. So we'll keep it at 75. That keeps our flight time down a bit. And you can see here I put automatic gimbal on actually during the flight well, just before the actual flight, I switched that off because we wanted the gimbal set directly looking at the cell tower. So here we are, we're now ready to take off. As you can see there, there's a little bit of green. That's where I went up and did the um, automatic gimbal and then I actually switched it off. So it flew that bit, I turned that off, brought it back in and we're ready to take off again. So it's uploading the mission to the drone. The drone will then take off. There she goes. 
which will fly up to start point one. As you can see, the little blue arrow that says start, or green arrow that says start. There's our cell tower, camera focused. Drone now heads over. We've actually sped this part up by eight times because the flight does take quite a while. So that will now go around capturing the, uh, the imagery of the cell tower. This is set in circles. So what it'll do is it'll circle the cell tower and get lower and lower, as you can see there from the height. Height slowly dropping as the drone comes round. Bring the drone back in manually just so we can avoid the tower. And we'll bring the drone down to land. Now it'd be time to go to the office. So here we are adding a new project. Now we're back in the office. So we'll call this cell tower. And the type is a tower mission. You can add a description and associate a project. So if we continue. Now we can upload our images. There's our images. We'll select them all. Pop them in and get them uploaded. And there's all of our images. That's all of them. And then we can press continue and create project. Now those images will upload. We shall save some time by skipping on to the next part so you don't have to watch the, uh, the progress of the images uploading. So here we go, all the images have uploaded, so we'll open our project. It'll take a little while for it to load, but it's to load all the images. And there we go. So you can see the path the drone flew around the cell tower and all those yellow dots are the photos it took. We can select the thumbnails and that'll tell you where the photo was taken. You can also turn off 3D and that gives us a top down view. So here we are. What we're going to do now is we're going to process this into a 3D image. So you press process. And then we get a chance to select 2D or 3D model. We want 3D model. Press process. And that's now sent away to be processed, to be turned into a 3D model. When we come back, we should have our 3D model rendered. So our 3D model has been processed. Press the 3D button. And there you go. There is our cell tower all rendered a little scroll around it you'll notice that it's it's not a complete cell tower that was due to the fact that the tree line was quite high so i couldn't get any lower to be able to um, take images further down the uh, the actual mast part of the tower but we'll scroll around that if we select the yellow dots, that will bring up the corresponding photo. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create our 4D folder. So create a new folder and select 4D once it's opened. Give that a name. And then what you'll need to do, so you've got your, your new folder there, then we're going to have to move the original cell tower 
render into it or project into it. And then today's one. So we're going to move that into the same folder and press save. Then open our cell tower folder. You'll see two in there. We'll open the first one. And you can see there at the top, we've got October the 6th, 2022 and March the 27th, 2023. And there's today's one. Oops, there we go. And there's the one from October the 6th. So we can scroll into that. There we go. So just for comparison, there's the pair. And then what we can do is we can select compare. And that will bring up tick boxes for both. We'll tick the March one as well, and then press launch. And that brings up both of them side by side. So you can see the dates there at the top. Both renders in the screen below with all our flight path added around it. So there you go, there's today's one. And there's one from the 6th of October, 2022. Oh, bear with me. Let's bring that back in so it's a bit closer. There we go. And we can scroll around them in separate windows. So you can have a look at a true, true comparison of the two. And what we can do again, we can select our yellow dots, which will be our corresponding photos for each. we go we can actually scroll right in so you can get better detail it's pretty much the same photo on both sides shot at different times and we can also do here is we can also annotate separately on each image so we'll put dish in there. And then this one, you could put something like, you know, we'll annotate that one. And you could put upgraded dish, for example. Once you've annotated those images, they actually turn orange or red if you've marked them as severe. So we'll go back to the timeline. So from here, as per usual, with all of your projects, you can share them. So it's either internally or externally, and you can also run reports on them. So there you go. That's a full end-to-end -end process with 4D. Thanks very much for watching.